I'm Yolanda Gautier, and I'm the Senior Living Health and Wellness Navigator for the Center for African American Health. The focus of the Center for African American Health has been, um, for over 20 years, a focus and commitment to improving the health and well being of the African American community. So, of course, that would include our elders. We um, pride ourselves on being able to provide community based, evidence based, disease prevention, disease management programs, and events um, for our community. So one of the things that I would say is that the issues have exacerbated as a result of COVID-19, but for many in our community, they continue to have, of course, health disparities, which is being proven um, or highlighted by the impact of COVID-19. But additionally, um, food um, sourcing and resources, because many of those who live in our communities um, live in food deserts and the need for housing, uh, affordable housing, as well as access to housing. So one of the things that happens when individuals become older, if they have decided that they're going to downsize, it's being able to find something that, that is affordable and does not take all of the savings that they have worked years um, to be able to have. And then the other is for those who maybe they were renters all of their lives. And so they don't necessarily have the necessary uh, finances to be able to do deposit first and last month's rent. Um, we're also just looking at their health care as well as as how they are being connected and to whom they are being connected um, with within the community. So by that, I mean, what does it mean for an elder who might be living alone? Are they connected to a senior recreation center? Are they connected to a senior living center? Do they have church connections? Um, do they have neighbors who check in on them, um, especially if they don't have children who are able to do that, adult children who are able to do that. I just really feel like people should not ever have to leave their communities to get the resources that they need. I would say I am just passionate about the life, excitement, and activity um, that older Americans have. Now, of course, I'm getting there. I won't say how much longer it'll be until I consider myself an older Coloradan. But however, um, just the zeal and the zest that the individuals I've worked with approach things. As much as I probably didn't appreciate um, COVID-19 and its restrictions, I also found so much to be grateful for. And that I attribute to the people that I've worked with um, because they're just saying, you know, we just need to stay in the moment and we need to work with the moment. So one of my watch phrases for 2021 is that each day 2021 happens. We create it each day. And for me not to sit up and try and plan out a whole year, um, because that may or may not happen the way I am planning it today. So I definitely have gotten that um, from the community that I've been working with. But it is about me being able to provide what I can, where I am, where I stand for those who are in need of the services. And if I can't find it, I'm going to research until I can find somebody who can find it for me and help me with that. So I know I can't do it by myself and I need everybody to help. So that would be one of the things I would say that I'm passionate about. My name is Lydia Duma. I work as optionist counselor for refugee and immigrant population and community resource navigator. Dr. Kak provides aging and disability uh, resources. My specific program provides services to older adults, 
and with disabilities from refugee and immigrant populations. The issue for refugee older adults in my community is the language barrier to obtaining citizenship. Let me brief or summarize a little bit about refugees background. Refugees left their country due to political reasons and left their everything behind, like uh, such as um, family member, loved ones, uh, childhood memories, everything they left behind. All the refugees have been through difficult situations and some face mental health issues, stigma and trauma. When they come to the USA, it's difficult for them to obtain a citizenship because of the language barrier, their age, difficulty remembering things. Let me share a quote from my, uh, one of the refugee older adult. Uh, he had an appointment. I was helping him with the immigration attorney uh, with one-on-one -on -one consultation. After he completed uh, his appointment, he called me back. He, he called out my name, Lydia, my child, and I said, yes. Am I going to end my life journey without knowing where I belong? He questions that to me. And for the moment, I was uh, quiet and it breaks my heart. And I get it why he said that. They want to be part of this land because of the age. And he said, I'm too old to study English and when I'm going to become a citizen. And some of them, they used to be a doctors, teachers back home. But what are the options or ways to support them to pursue their dream to become citizens? How can we help them to feel like they have a home and then they can access other benefits as a citizens? I hope someone hears their voices. Imagine being in the shoes and you are in different country and you don't speak their language. How does this feel? And you don't know how to get connected with resources and you have to learn new things each time, the system, the role. I will let you answer that. Thank you so much. I'm proud that Dr. Card provides his services to older adults because they are the ones who need more support. And I'm happy to see refugee older adults when they integrate with different communities and become voters and support each other. And I have seen uh, some of our clients, uh, they volunteered in different organizations. And I felt so happy and um, they have values and they are uh, providing services to each other and to friends and to the organization. So they have value and that makes me happy seeing them uh, in that way. My name is Alejandra Lerma and I am a case manager uh, for the Latino community and refugees. I work for uh, Dr. Cobb, Denver Regional Council of Government. My role is to help uh, older adults of low income to get benefits, to, to get them um, uh, medical care, uh, dental vision, uh, social security, and everything else that they need. The focus is to be a strong support for those of, uh, that have barriers and uh, accessing uh, the, the public benefits and all the, the resources that they need uh, for lack of the uh, uh, language uh, or, or their you know, academic levels. Uh, so we, we are the, the strong bone to support them and to help them get better and improve their livelihood. The number one is medical care. Medical care is very um, um, limited, even to those that are legal residents. Immigration laws have prevented for them to get medical care. And I have cases that are, you know, um, seniors that are in their 70s, 80s, 
a lot of them have been uh, victims of COVID and they have huge piles of medical bills. Uh, they cannot recover well because of the situation, but they don't have access to medical care. Uh, their only care that they get is low income clinics that are very limited to the what they can offer. It's a very sad situation for them, worrying about how they're gonna pay those bills. And even without COVID, they were going through a lot of health issues. A lot of them want to work, but if they don't have the main thing that is medical coverage, they, they cannot support themselves and they live in a very bad situation. For example, Mr. Q, uh, 84 year old, he's a terminal, a cancer uh, terminal patient. He's just been like that for several years. The wife is under a lot of stress. They're legal residents. They have very low or minimal income because they don't have access to pensions with social security and they don't have ac uh, access to public benefits. It's very sad to see them how in poor shape they are. He has to have oxygen 24 seven and um, they're just borrow somebody's oxygen so he can you know, keep on going until the end of his life. So uh, the wife is the main uh, caregiver. Uh, she does everything for him, his total care. This is not acceptable, not here in the first world country that we cannot even offer the, the main thing that is uh, medical care to all these seniors that have been here 15, 20 years. And only because they don't have, a, they have the sponsor situation in immigration, they don't qualify for nothing. It's, it's lack of dignity for any human being. That's where my heart is right now. And that's the main thing we need to provide I'm very proud of uh, helping them change their lives and to, to get in a better place, like becoming a U.S. citizen, uh, getting them in English classes, um, you know, get them connected, teach them how to connect with resources that they can do. Um, so that's what we want, independent older adults to avoid for them to go to nursing homes. As long as we uh, keep on working together, I think we will have a better situation and healthier seniors, because like I said, you know, they can, they wanna work, but you know, as long as we give them the opportunity, the opportunity to, to just be in the first world country that we are, as human beings and as um, uh, residents of the United States, I think that uh, we can improve even the economy because they can bring more to the economy. So that, that's what I have to say.